Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, the world's friendliest prison cook, and it's time for episode 2 of my Let's Play of Dishonored. So, where we left off last time, um, we've been playing Corvo Atano, who returns home from a diplomatic mission to visit his, quote, friend, unquote, the Empress of the Isles, uh, and give her some very bad news about the plague that's racking the nation. She is then immediately murdered, and you are arrested for her murder. Six months later, you hear you are in prison, they have failed to persuade you to uh, sign a confession as to her murder, and now a guard has dropped off something that he says is a gift. Corvo, who we are is irrelevant right now. Just know that we have faith in you. Here is the key to your cell. Once you're out, head for the prison's interrogation room. Take the explosive there and plant it on the outer door. When the bomb goes off, run. Make for the river and lose yourself in the sewers. You'll find some useful gear stashed there. Of the, one of the prison guards will leave a weapon just outside your cell. And good luck, we need you alive for what's to come. From a friend. Didn't know I had any friends. Corvo's position as uh, an immigrant to this country is kind of interesting, actually. It seems like he doesn't really have much in the way of friends, besides from the Empress herself. It's on account of Corvo, the one who killed the Empress and abducted her daughter, Emily. A bit of luck, you can just take this guy. Right. Social event for the high The other two will not notice. See the noble lord protector get his head chopped off. Stand bad as us betting on the dog. He used to spit my food. Yeah, you want to kick him while he's down? Attention. Now we've looked out the solitary bit here. wing is off limits to maintenance crews unless accompanied by an officer of the watch. Escort through the solitary wing must be scheduled in advance with one week's notice. Because um if that guard gets even slightly startled by the fact that a man he was standing nearby has vanished, uh, he basically won't turn around and we can't sneak past him. However, with a bit of luck we can sneak through this area just fine as soon as he turns back around again. This uh, whole opening chapter serves as kind of an introduction to the game's various mechanics. We were taught um, the basic stealth mechanic through the medium of a small child inviting you to play hide and seek, which is a delightful way to do it in the last uh, last episode. Please turn around. Oh my god. Please turn around. Turn around, turn around. Thank you. Fucking hell. Good lord. You took so long, so I'm going to pick your pocket because that's the Tomorrow's rules. execution will be restricted to the personnel assigned to the event and approved dignitaries. I should be able to duck only. under here and be basically invisible. Yep, that's the real trick. Um, anytime you're ducking, if you approach certain low surfaces, you can duck completely underneath them, at which point you're almost undetectable. So, I should be able to nip around here and continue on my merry way. I could also I could knock both both of them out or indeed kill them, but uh, they just have a couple of coins on them, and I don't think Corvo would be killing people at this stage, not unless he's forced to. You can freely steal all of their stuff though, because well, you're a man on the run now. You're going to need some coins. So um, there's something I want to talk about from the previous episode, which is that. If they the don't want to work, they don't get the. Oh, uh oh, that's a problem. Ah, oh, jeez. So I messed up a bit there. I didn't realize this guy was talking. Um. So I guess I'm gonna have to murder some people after all. It's very easy to be incredibly destructive and extremely killy. <laughs> For that reason, I am trying to keep my kills as low as possible. There is an objective number of people which, once you've killed them, it doesn't matter how you play the rest of the game. None of the um, corrupt, uh, not corruption, chaos lowering events will lower the chaos enough to uh, prevent you from getting the uh, high chaos ending. So I'm going to have to be more careful than that. I didn't realise he was in the conversation. I thought it was the two on the floor below him who were talking. Also, notice the the influence here of. Um, Let's say 1930s style fascist iconography. This is, I assume, pretty intentional. The game draws its influences quite broadly. It's generally thought of as being a kind of Victorian punk kind of setting, but um, it draws its influences 
quite strongly from the Regency era, era that immediately pre-Victorian era, but also very much from the Edwardian era, around 1900. Um, the main setting of the game, uh, it fits in there quite neatly, is um, a city that is very explicitly inspired by uh, turn-of-the-century London and especially turn-of-the-century New York. So, um, it's implied that these kind of um, overtly fascist influences, big red banners with a logo on it, signs say things like order shall prevail, it's implied that this is all stuff that's been brought in since the uh, royal spymaster took over as the Lord Regent. This is interesting to read, but we'll read it again later, because it's a very common book. Is that gonna... Oh, he's fine. I was worried it would crush him for a second. So, um, at the start... Actually, let's listen to this. Corvo's unconscious again. Though he's taken more punishment than the two men we brought in for interrogation. When he wakes, we'll start again. Having him sign the confession for her murder isn't critical, but it might be useful to us later. The assassination of an empress is not a trivial Ow. matter. So, uh, yeah. There's various items that can be picked up and thrown for various uh, purposes, mostly just to distract people. This is not particularly interesting either. Although, I do wonder whose office this is. It's quite clearly an office. It's not the torturer's office, even though it is the torture chamber. Is it? Is it his office? Because the power move of having a gigantic portrait of yourself in your office where you torture people is um, pretty appreciable from like a grand villain standpoint. Anyway, let's move on. And with a bit of no, I can't catch up with that guy before he uh, gets within the sight, sight lines of some other people. There's one mechanical detail I want to mention now before I forget forever, uh, which is that when you are peeking around corners, you are actually invisible. The game doesn't change your hitbox. So provided your hitbox is still in cover, which it clearly is, uh, people can't see you, even if you are tilting your entire goddamn court torso around the corner into their sightline. Ooh, is he coming all the way around here? <clears throat> or are we good? Am I good? It'd be really convenient if you went and stood somewhere where the other guy wasn't looking at you so that I could pick your pocket. I think that door is locked, and one of them has the key. <coughs> Generally speaking, I won't be murdering people unless. Here, Morris was dragged off by the overseers. Some black magic nonsense. Another night, another patrol with you. Unless I get some kind of unfortunate moment where someone sees me and I uh, have a fraction of a second to stab them in the neck before they raise the alarm. Yoink! Perfect crime. Corvo's execution is tomorrow, right? Yeah, but everything has to be set up today. I can't wait to see his family. Not everyone did, but I really like the Empress. A little bit of semi-subtle storytelling there. Oh, fuck! Ah, oh, jeez, buddy. Oh, fuck. I'm so sorry. I thought you were walking in a different direction. Oh, well. What a shame. Let's just get this guy real quick. He can wake up in a small pile with his murdered friend. I'm sure that won't cause Attention. some kind of horrible Tomorrow's trauma. Execution will be restricted to the personnel assigned to the event. There's not even anything valuable in here. There's just a few coins. Some uh, Pratchett jelly deals. Very realistically gross sounding food in this game, which is also very appropriate to the era, as I was mentioning before. Um, the degree to which they are inspired very directly by historical eras like that is something I will probably return to periodically. But let's just not get spotted by this guy first. This first chapter actually serves not just as an introduction to the mechanics of the game, but as kind of a subtle, unintentional introduction to one of the optional playstyles a lot of people have tried in this game. Namely the no magic playthrough. 
At the end of this uh, chapter, there is an interstitial chapter where you uh, get magic powers. And the movement powers in this game and the various other powers that you get are great. They are all exceptionally well designed. However, it is, I think, a triumph of game design that despite the fact that they have all of these powers and have clearly designed around the use of these pow- oh, fuck. Powers. Uh, hmm, okay. This might be solvable if I can just get this guy real quick before his friend up there starts looking over the edge. And I'll hide him in this dog kennel. So I think he's noticed his friend is missing, but I don't think he saw me. Maybe wind or something. Yeah. Yeah, it could be wind. Maybe he's got really bad farts and he had to go somewhere else for a little while. Oh, no. Stupid goddamn. Dublin somehow. Oh, God. So, um, yeah. That could have been terrible, but it went okay. I'll just duck under this desk in case he turns around. Are we good? We're we good. Fuck. My dude, you have no idea how close you came to death! You came within just... Oh, you no. came within a hair of me God. fucking stabbing you in the face. You realise that, right? Like, oh, if you had startled, that would have been it for you. I'm just gonna, for your own safety, I am going to choke you out. This is actually kind of necessary because I think that the better way to play these kinds of games is to broadly avoid knocking guards out if you can avoid it. Or, um... Brutally and destructively clipping them into the wall so that their head becomes crushed. So that should that should not have happened. That was a that was a bug. That's not a death on my conscience. I'm going to insist <laughs> uh, repeatedly to the um, the coroner. I mean, fuck it. I'm escaping from prison. It's not like I don't think I'm a murderer already. But th I promise this time it wasn't me. So, yeah, if you want to get through this area non-lethally, you kind of have to knock these two out because they can be hurt by the explosion of this thing. Because we are uh, brave men of Daring Do, we're just going to hide in this box. I believe that if you stand too close, it can and does hurt you. Anyway, so that is the first half of our thrilling escape achieved. Seems pretty promising. Believe it or not, it's actually possible to get through this area without being spotted. I think that the achievement for completing the game without ever being spotted and without knocking anybody out can... I, I think that it, it only applies after this first chapter. I think it considers it only fair to require that of you after you have successfully managed to get magic powers that make it easier. But if you're determined, like I am, you can actually get through this area without ever being spotted with zero detections and zero uh, kills. I didn't do that today, but I have done it in the past. So that first area kind of comprises a quick um, overview of how to actually use stealth, how to sneak past people, and if you fuck up, how to do combat. Um, it lets you sort of... You think he had help? Who'd know how to do that? Bottle Street Gang, maybe. Watch for booby traps. Be some down here by the look of it. Yeah. Note from a friend. Cool though, if you're reading this, it means our plan has worked and you have broken free from Coldridge. One of our contacts has hidden weapons for you somewhere in deeper in the sewers. Grab the gear and find Samuel where these tunnels dump into the river. He will bring you to us. A friend who will meet you soon. I feel like whoever wrote these really was taking kind of glee in being some kind of secret oh, entity. Corvo. You're afraid of him? He's Sir Conan. It's all merchants and whores down there. Kids like you. You never saw what he was like. So, uh, yeah, this is another introduction to mechanic. Essentially, the previous chap- uh, or rather, this whole chapter, the prison and the sewers, is, um, a quick introduction to all the various ways the mechanics interact with each other. This is how we learn rat plagues will attack people. Rat swarms can kill people. If it's big enough, it can kill multiple people. These are all kind of systemic um, concepts that exist as part of the uh, the systems in the game and which can be interacted with in various ways as you go through the game for all of your various different purposes. So they've shown us rats attack people, they've shown us that rats can kill people if there's enough of them. They've also shown us here rats are attracted to corpses and will eat corpses. These are all simple rules which exist for you to manipulate your environment. The simulation in a high degree of detail of an environment and then within that environment having explicitly understood systems which operate in logical ways and behave according to common sense, essentially. That is the keystone of immersive sim design. 
and uh, I'll be talking about that more as we go along. This is kind of a, a sad little vignette. Damien's journal. Amanda and I only had enough coin to buy half the elixir we needed. Even that's gone now and there's nothing to do but wait. We're very sick and there's no place above to hide from the city watch. They're breaking into houses all over the district. We'll stay here and share our last hours together. The fire will keep the rats away, but they'll inherit the city. Yeah, coming back and playing through this game in fucking 2021 in the middle of the first major pandemic for a hundred years is kind of... It's kind of awkward, huh? It's kind of, kind of weird. Um, sorry, my dude, you're in the way. But yeah, so uh, there was something I was talking about, but I don't remember what it was. I don't think there's anything under here. Nope, there isn't. So I'm going to dip back to a point I got distracted from earlier, namely that in the um, opening in the previous episode, the game pulls a trick that I fucking hate. I think it's a very um, unskillful narrative flourish. There is an attempt by so many, um, well, by pop culture fictions in general, but especially by video games, to get you invested in the world. Actually, before I talk about that, I do want to just highlight again that I really appreciate the way the exposition was dealt with in this game. You hear believable conversations that it makes sense that people might be having. Those conversations tell you about the nature of the world. We learned that Corvo is from Sokonos. He's not from this place. We learned about the Rat Plague and about the elixir that prevents it. We learned these things through conversations which makes sense for people to have. And uh, it is a world away from the default method of um, exposition in video games, namely people monologuing direct to camera. Which brings me back to my previous point, namely that um, the way that games generally try and get you invested in the world is that they introduce you, they introduce you to a character, they tell you you love this character, and then they immediately kill that character off. This does not work. It fundamentally never, ever works. And the simple reason is that you don't love that character. You just met them. Why would you care about them? Um, so the fact that they introduce the Empress and then immediately kill her off doesn't work, in my opinion. It's a really common uh, trope, and it just never, ever works out. However, unusually, in Dishonored specifically, that problem is actually completely obviated by the fact that they have Emily. They introduce you to Emily, and by the way, uh, there are booby traps in these sewers, as those guards earlier mentioned. That is another mechanic we are carefully introduced to in this conveniently controlled environment. Um, and it's just another systemic thing you can uh, use throughout the game. You can bait people into traps and so on. So, oof, that was close. Uh, what the hell was I saying? So yeah, they introduce you to the Empress, they tell you you care about the Empress, but then all she does is monologue at you and immediately get killed. You don't care. It doesn't matter that Corvo cares, because you don't also don't know Corvo yet, because you've only just started playing as him. But they do this with Emily, and it works with Emily for the simple reason that they give you a second to get um, endeared to her. You show up, she shows you that she loves you with the simple appreciation of a child for their father figure, and that's really endearing. She asks you to play a game and you play a game together. That's all it takes for you to feel affection for this character. That's all it takes for you to be invested. And so then we care about the main plot, not because of the Empress, but because uh, because our daughter has been stolen. To the Lord Protector. Greetings, Corvo, or should I say Lord Protector, as you were known before the title was wrongfully taken from you. We are servants of the Empire and the true Empress, a group of loyalists who want very much to meet you. Take these weapons, crafted for you of the finest materials in the Isles, and meet with our man Samuel, where these tunnels spill into Renhaven River. All haste and luck. We share a common purpose. Again, the writer of these letters really, really likes to ham it up. Nice pistol crossbow. Pretty cool folding sword. Exactly the tools an assassin might need, for all that they call you Lord Protector. So, um, something else I want to mention is that uh, my episodes traditionally are about 20 minutes long. I did a poll before Dishonored because Dishonored does not necessarily um, 
fit easily into a 20 minute episode structure about whether or not it would be okay for my episodes to generally be longer. The result was pretty much completely inconclusive. Um, half the people said, yep, longer is fine. Half the people said, nope, be the same length. So I'm going to aim for 20 minutes, but be willing to go up to like 10 minutes longer than that if necessary. So here we have um, the traditional 0451 lock. Jelly, in case you two have to remember, look for your look to your whiskey for the answer. Whiskey, got it? If you want your share, you'll sort it out. If not, I'll come back. So yeah, that's essentially, here's some whiskey. Hidden behind it is the number 451. Well, gee, I wonder if that's the safe's code. Four, uh, four, one, two, three, four, five, and one. So it's good. So <laughs> there's a lot of environmental storytelling, and in fact, um, immersive sims are kind of the pioneers of Im immersive story, uh, environmental storytelling as a creative technique. Hammers, tools. Jelly was trying to break open this uh, safe. He was not smart enough to figure out that it's hidden behind his whiskey next to a sign that says whiskey. After the guy told him it's behind the whiskey. But yeah. So um, ever since I believe System Shock, or possibly System Shock Two, I forget which one. The uh, me, uh Do you know who we're hunting here? Don't try to take him out alone. But what if no one from the squad is around? Then try to make a lot of noise when you die. Knock something over if you can. Bastard. There's a real sense of humor to a lot of these interactions. Try to knock something over when you die is just an inherently funny thing to say to your guy like who's worried. Paper. <laughs> So, uh, it's worth knocking these guys out simply because there's a lot, lot of water around here, and, um... Buy your ration of elixir from today? If you knock someone out carelessly in the wrong position to knock them out, hey, guess what? They're gonna flop lifelessly into the water and then become genuinely lifeless as they drown. The game, uh... Does differentiate between... Oh, shit, he saw me. Ah, beans. Well, I got the shit kicked out of me, huh? Beat him to the house. And I'm not quite sure what went wrong here. I guess I just got took by surprise. Still. Smells like a dead weeper in here. Well, geez, maybe there is a dead weeper down here. Did you consider that? It's the fucking sewers. Nice of him to tuck himself behind this cover so no one will see him. So one of the things about Dishonored is that um, height and a height advantage is usually super overpowered. If you are uh, a certain amount above someone's eye line, Stay it's alert, basically worms. impossible for them to see you. Out this way on my watch. Also note that that guy is wearing a mask. Very few characters in the game actually do wear masks. Ha, you little bastard. So uh, in life, make sure you're like that guy. Wear your masks. Don't go out in public. Try to avoid sick people, I guess. Hmm. I think there's four of them here. That's one. There's the other two. Is there anyone else around here? Doesn't look like it. So, stealth games don't usually differentiate meaningfully between alive and dead in a mechanical sense. If you knock someone out, they're knocked out for good. Dishonored is much like any other uh, stealth game in that respect. I suppose I could just... Huh? Shit! Oh, I'm sorry, my guy. So I guess only one of you gets to live. Um, I'm not entirely sure that was... M no, it was my fault. I'm so sorry, my guys. I tried. I really tried. Um, it's just unfortunate that this area... Essentially, it's really difficult to get through without being spotted. <clears throat> if you want to try and knock the guys out, which I do because I want to go into this secret room over here. Uh, because I want to, you know, show off all of the special notable things. Dead Hermit's note. It's here by Renhaven, I'll make my last home. It stinks to the void, but my grandmum's hagfish stew will drive the odour away. Remember sailing on this river to the great ocean, the vast blinding light and blue water. I was fifteen and our nets were always full to bursting. The old days, before everything went to shit. Anyway it goes, it's either the boots of the watch on my skull, the teeth of the rats on my bones, or the trembles of the plague on my skin, it don't matter to me. So already they are very, um carefully, clearly, and unambiguously showing you that this world is a pretty shitty place. There's uh, any number of reasons for it being shitty. Also, there's a little treasure pile hidden up here. And um, 
I will talk later about some of the curious... Oh, I thought it was something. It was not. Um, some of the curious concepts this game has, such as a weird um, affection for the concept of the Fisher King. This idea that uh, the only true leadership that can result in a healthy nation is that of a uh, strong royal presence with the correct bloodline. Attention, Dunwall City. The assassin Corvo is responsible for the murder of our fair empress. And the Love to eat food out of the trash. Emily, it's really healthy and good for you. Delicious succulent sewer meats. Custody. Absolutely Any perfect for your health and complexion. Over here. Quickly, I'm a friend. Anyway, I definitely trailed off after talking about something I was intending to talk about, but I don't remember what it was. Um, <laughs> this is kind of like a... I'm Samuel, and I work for some good people who want very much to meet you. Well, they said you'd come out here, but I could still hardly believe it. I'll take you to meet them. Just down the river from here. Wait here, I need Look a moment around first. if you need. I'll be here. Just don't take too long. So it's unfortunate that I got too close to him because there's something very unintentionally comic of having this guy standing in the bright shining light, showing him as some kind of a heroic presence, a good friend here to save you as the sun beams through the clouds. And then just this ship with a very mournful wail happens to just be passing through the background. It has this intense energy of like it just has a very good comic timing, and it's unfortunate we didn't get to see that, but that's fine. So there's actually a secret treasure cache down here, somewhere. Um, here it is. Uh, right, I couldn't see what that was, but that's fine. Uh, we will get eaten by fish. Generally stay out of water, it's a dangerous place to be. But yeah, so, um, that is the end of the second episode of my Let's Play of Dishonored. We'll uh, head off with Samuel Beechworth next time and see what he's got to say and who he's got to show us. But, yeah, that's going to be the end for now. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. If you like this, you can also follow me on Twitter for updates, stream announcements, and one-tweet micro-reviews. Or why not donate to me via Patreon or Ko-fi, or just share my work. Thank you so much for watching.